Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at cumulative frequency graphs, okay? So the first thing um, to know, what to pick up on is cumulative. What does it mean? In this case it just means a running total. So if I have uh, this example here, during a day the number of late buses was recorded, so here's the number of minutes late, between 0 and 10, 10 and 20 and so on and so forth. And here I have the frequency, so how many buses uh, were between 0 and 10 minutes late, it was 5 and, and so on and so forth. So cumulative frequency, as I said, the cumulative bit just means it's a running total. So all I do is the first one is 5, and then the second one will be 5 add 8, which will be 13. So as you can see, I just add the two together to get the running total. And the next one, 5 add 8 add 22, well, will give me 35. And then 5 add 8 add 22 add 12. 47, and you've probably got the right idea now, so 5, 8, 22, 12, uh, and 8, 55, and then add them all up, and then you get 60, so there are 60 buses in total, so it's just a running total when you're working out the cumulative frequency column there. Now, when we plot it, a couple of things you have to be aware of. When you're plotting, you have to use the upper limit. Sometimes in the exam, they'll give you an extra column and tell you to write the upper limit in it. Uh, otherwise, you can just remember it and use it from uh, this uh, part of this column here. So I'm going to be plotting 10, and the cumulative frequency is 5. So there's 10 for minutes late, which is the upper limit. I'm going to plot 5. So there we go. Uh, next one, upper limit is 20, and it's 13. So roughly about there. Now obviously when you do this in the exam, you'll have the actual graph paper, so you'll be able to do this a lot more accurately than I'm doing right now, but you get the idea. So next one, upper limit is 30, and it's 35, so there. Next one, upper limit is 40 and 47, so about there. And upper limit is 50 and 55. And the last one, upper limit is 60, and of course, 60 in total. Okay, so once you've plotted your points, you then need to draw a nice smooth curve. Okay, so do this in pencil in case you mess it up. Um, and just another thing to be aware of, obviously here, the lowest point is zero, so that's where I'm going to start from. However, I have seen in previous exam questions where once they've given you the table, underneath it, they've actually said what the lowest value is. They might have said, oh, the lowest value is five, in which case, make sure you start at five. If they don't, they don't tell you anything, and all you got is this, you start at this point here. In this case, it's zero. So just be aware of that, wherever you need to start from. So I'm going to do my best here and draw a nice smooth curve. Make sure you go through all the points, because otherwise you will lose marks. And as I say, use pencil just in case you make a mistake, okay? So there's my cumulative frequency curve. Should always be increasing, because as I said, it's a running total. So if you suddenly come back down, you know you've made a mistake. Uh, questions that can be asked with a cumulative frequency are estimating the mean, the upper quartile, lower quartile, and then the interquartile range. So... Let's start off with the median. So the median is the middle value. They're already in order, okay? So I'm going to find the middle value. So if the total is 60, not to be confused with 70, although the uh, cumulative frequency uh, or the y-axis goes up to 70, the actual total is 60. So just be aware of that. That has caught some people out in the past. So the total is 60, so the middle would be 30. So I'm going to get my ruler and draw a line going from 30 across to my cumulative frequency line and then a nice straight line going down. Again, this would be easier when you if you had graph paper. Uh, and as you can see there, it's about 28. Now the upper quartile is three quarters of the way up. Okay, the upper quartile is three quarters. So if the total is 60, three quarters would be 45. And it's exactly the same thing. So from 45, going across, And then going down, as you can see there, make sure you draw these lines on, because again, it's part of your working. And I'm going to say that's 38. And the lower quarter, I might have guessed it, if the upper is uh, three quarters, the lower is a quarter. So a quarter of 60 is 15. So there we go. And down, and I'm going to say that's 21. 
Okay, so the upper quartile is three quarters, the lower quartile is a quarter, and then the interquartile range, you just subtract the two. So the upper quartile, which we said was 38, uh, take away 21, uh, so what's that going to be? Uh, 17. Okay, so the interquartile range is 17, so 50% of all the values are within the interquartile range, and that works out at 17. So that's a very basic cumulative frequency. You might be asked once you've done or found this information out to draw a box plot. I'm not going to do box plots in this video, I'll do that in a separate one, but just so you're aware that these uh, um, questions, cumulative frequency and box plots, are usually linked. Okay, so I'll do a box plot video in uh, soon. So that's one example. Let's have a look at another one. So again, very, very similar here. Uh, the cumulative frequency table shows information about the di diameters of apples. Very exciting. Um, but this time I've been given the cumulative frequency uh, column here. Now, usually you don't get this because obviously you'll plot it. However, there was a question um, a couple of uh, uh, years ago um, where they had a cumulative frequency graph and you had to work out the frequency before working out um, a histogram. So this is why I've included this one here, where you've been given the cumulative frequency, and I actually want to work out what the frequency is. So, as this is a running total, all I'm going to do is work out the difference between each one. So the first one's obviously going to be 12. And then what's the difference between uh, 12 and 42? Well, that must be 30. And then 42 and 49, well, the difference there is 7. 49 and 54, that's 5. 54 and 58, difference is 4. And then finally, 58 and 60 is 2. So again, you can check that this is correct. So 12 add 30 is 42. 12 add 30 add 7 is 49, and so on and so forth. So you can check that you've got your frequencies correct. So that's the, the purpose of this one. And the rest of it was exactly the same as the first example. So remember, plot in the upper bound. So this time it's 60 and 12, 70 and 42, 80 and 49, 90 and 54, 158, be about there, and 110, and 60. Okay, so again, I haven't been told what the lowest value is, so I'm going to assume it's 50, so that's where I'm going to start at, at 50. If this was to go a bit further along, make sure you did start, or do start at 50. And again, I'm going to try and draw a nice smooth curve going through each of the points. And again, use pencil just in case you make a mistake, because that probably should be a little bit more smooth, but you get the idea. And the rest of it was the same as before, so estimate the mean. So again, if the total is 60, not to be confused with 70, the total is 60, what's half of 60? It's 30. So I go from 30 to my curve, and I go down, so that's about 67. Again, this would be much easier if you had graph paper. Uh, upper quartile, so three quarters of the way, so three quarters of 60 is 45. And then go down. Uh, so that's going to be 73, I reckon. Let's go 73. And the lower quartile, again, is a quarter, so a quarter of 60. So 60 was the total, so a quarter of that is 15. And that's about 62. Okay, so the interquartile range, just as before, is the upper quartile, which is 73. Take away the lower quartile, which is 62. And then that gets you 11. Okay, so again, this could be put into a box plot. So that's like part B of the question. So make sure you do check out the box plot video once it's done. Okay, so that's drawing uh, cumulative frequency graphs. So next thing I want to have a look at is this here, where they give you a cumulative frequency uh, graph already done, and they ask you some questions. So this one here is students who have just done a test. So the first question it says is, how many students took the test? So again, it's not how uh, high the y-axis or cumulative frequency goes to, it's where the graph ends. So here is where it ends. So I go across here, 
and it's 60. So 60 students took the test, so just be aware of that one. How many students got less than 55 marks? Right, so here's the marks on the x-axis. So I go to 55. I'm just looking at this. Yep. So I go to 55. And I go up. And then I can go across. Like so. So how many people got less than 55 marks? There we go, it's about 58. Next one, how many students got over half marks? So half marks, well, they ends there, the cumulative in the graph, so I go down to 60, so half marks there would be 30. So I'm gonna go up from 30. And I'm going to go across. So how many students got less? So it's less than, than this. So as I go to there, it's 35. So how many students got less than 50? Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I'm here now, aren't I? How many students got over half marks? So this time it's over half marks. So if 30 is half marks, I go up. I'm looking at here. How many are over? OK, so under is 35, which means over must be 25. So it's 25 students, OK, because I've got, that's 35. So 35 students got under half, and there's 60 in total, which means 25 must have got over. And you can do, test that if you like. So 5, 10, 20, so yep, 25. Next bit says write your answer as a percentage. Well, it's 25 students out of a total of 60. So if you do 25 over 60, times that by 100, you can then get that as a fraction, which if you use a calculator, comes out at 41.67%, okay? And last question here, if three quarters of the students pass the test, what is the pass mark? So this one here is a bit, bit trickier. If three quarters passed, that means that one quarter failed or did not pass okay in which case if I find a quarter remember 60 was how many students there were so a quarter of them are failing so a quarter would be 15 so I go from 15 across and down so then I come to 20 marks so 20 marks would be the pass mark because a quarter of them failed so everything below that would be a fail everything above that so three quarters above that that would be the pass okay so just make sure that you're being a bit careful there if you find three quarters down down here so go from 45 and across that would tell you uh three quarters of the people who, be who got below that because you don't want that you want to know how many three quarters above that so to work it out we find a quarter and then everyone above that has passed, everyone below that has failed. So a quarter would be 20 marks. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.